Hello, I'm Mrs. J, and today we're going to do some graphs for Chapter 6. So if this was a set of points on a test, and I put them in order, or a quiz, whichever, probably a test, 50 points. Um, I have them numerically in order, so it was easier to count values. But looking at this, the first thing we want to find is the mean, median, mode, and range using the functions from the computer. Okay. So click on the block to the right of the mean, right here. And then you go up to f of x up here, and you type equals And then you want average. So we could start to type average. And see average comes up the second one. It returns the average. Average is the same as mean. So you want to double click on it. And then you want to highlight your data because you want it to take the average of the numerical data. You highlight all of the numerical data and hit enter. So the mean was 40.6. For the median, again, click where you want it to the answer to be. Then I go up here and I click on it. I hit equals and I start to type median. And there's the median. Double click on it and then highlight your data and hit enter. When you're highlighting your data, you click on the first one. When you click on it, then you hold your left button down on your mouse and you go all the way down. I don't want to, I already did it, so. But our median was 41. And the mode, which is most often, which it looks like bees were most often. But, of course, we're not doing mode for the letters. We're doing them for the numbers. So you click on here, and then you click up here and put equals and mode, M-O-D-E. Now, this one's if you have more than one thing. We only have one thing, number, so we want um, single. Um, this one was what was used in an older Excel file. But now there's more than one, but I want single. Highlight all my values. Whoops, went way too far. Then hit enter. Now sometimes it's trying to read it as a name. Um, so what you can do is right click it and then go down to, um, where's it at? Format cells. You want it to be a number and one decimal place. Hmm, it's still not. Oh, let's just double check. I might have highlighted the P. Let's go back. So we click here, we type equals and type mode, and it comes up right here. So I double click it, and then I highlight my numbers right there. Hit enter, and there it is. I don't know. I must not have highlighted it right the first time. Range is a little bit different because it's your largest and your smallest. Notice I put for the range you have to use formulas and subtract them. And so I want to use equals and we want the largest. Okay. 
which notice that that returns the kth largest value. So if we wanted the tenth largest value, we could do that. Well, let's try max. Now, large would work, but I think it's under max. Returns the largest value. So when you're trying to find different ones, try different things, typing it in until you find the one you want. And this one we wanted max. And then you highlight your values. Hit enter. Oops. Okay, let's go back in there. Um, so that would give you the max, but we want the max minus the min. Highlight my numbers again. Hit enter. Max minus min. Oh, I think it's because I didn't put that parenthesis. But if we take the 47, which was the largest, minus 25, we get 22. So it did give us the right answer. So that's all of this first part. To find mean, mean, and mode, you use those formulas. To make a bar graph, now for a bar graph, remember that is the qualitative data, which is the letter grades. Fill in the frequency table. So you have to make a frequency table when you're making the bar graphs. To fill in the frequency table, you count how, how many A's, B's, C's, and so on. So there was 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine A's, B's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five C's. three D's, and one F. So I just counted how many there were of each. Then, so that was filling this out right here. Now we highlight that table, click insert, and click bar graph. So we highlight this. Oops. Insert at the top, and then see all the different graphs? Well, we want the bar graph. And there it is. You can change the name. Delete it, and then put grades on exam um, and it shows the letter grades. You can click on the little plus and it will let you put access titles so then you can go in um, letter grade number of students. And then also if you double click on it, it'll show you different colors. You can fill in different ways you want to do it. Um, pick a, pe a texture, all kinds of ways you could choose. So that looks kind of but it'll let you choose your patterns. Um, what else? You do want to make sure you have a title and label your axes when you do your project. 
what this would be. Our bar graph. I'm going to get rid of that so then we can do another one. For a pie chart, you again highlight the frequency table, go to insert, and you highlight the pie graph. And there we go. And it shows the A, B, C, D, F. Now you want to make sure you put the percents on it. So you want to double click it. Let me move this over some. See up on top, this one has percents, but you can find more like that. Like this. That's a nice one. But there's a lot of different ways and you can change your colors. And then you'd make your label. So that's your pie chart. We just made a frequency table, highlighted it, and it made our chart. Okay. The last one is the histogram. It's a little bit more involved. Now you might have to load it. Mine already has the histogram. If yours doesn't have the histogram, then you have to load it. To know if it has it, click on insert and then mine is right here. This is the histogram. This is the bar graph. They're different. The bar graph did not touch. A histogram touches. So you may have to um, create it. But mine already has it. If it doesn't, then you want to go through these options. Analysis tool pack. Um, click data at the top. Click on histogram. And then we can make our histogram. Now, the new one, I think it makes the bin automatically. So click input range and insert quantity of data. Okay, so if we go and highlight our data and then it's on insert histogram it will make it for you now if you don't like the range of values it's making here then you could use a bin instead so either way There's a histogram. For your data, you probably wouldn't use bins. I liked this bin because it's the A's, the B's, the C's. There were 0, 50s. 45 and above. There were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Forties or B's. Oh yeah, fourteen. Thirty-five would be a C. Thirty would be a D. And there was one F. So then you can do this instead and click on your histogram. But then it only made it in two groups. It's not as nice. So they've changed it a little since then. You don't really need the bin. You can just make the histogram. So you just highlight your data, go to insert and histogram and this graph will come up. 
And just like before, you can do your titles. You can click on here, double click it, and then the different colors and stuff come up. Um, and you can label your axes too. And then it gives you your axis titles. And you can change your colors. So depending on your version, you may have to download the histogram app first. But then you can follow the directions. Just highlight your data and do histogram just like you did the others. You don't need the bin anymore. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know.